Well, thanks so much for being with us here on Krem 2 News at noon. I'm Jen York. We are tracking breaking news right now. Montana authorities issued an Amber Alert for three children. Police believe their non custodial parents with a history of drug and violence took uh, the kids overnight in Great Falls. Now they may be driving two different cars. You can see there on the screen young children and the parents there. Police say one suspect may be driving a white Chevy Malibu with Montana license plate 224730B. The second may be driving a blue Chevy Tahoe Montana license plate 222599B. You can see those there on your screen. Anyone with information is asked to call the Cascade County Sheriff's Office at the number on your screen. Well, we are also tracking breaking news out of California. At least one person is dead following a school shooting north of Los Angeles. Doctors say several people are injured, some critically. Authorities say the suspected gunman is also in the hospital in grave condition. They say he was a student at the school. Local police say the shooting happened this morning before school started, and it sent the school and a nearby neighborhood into lockdown while authorities search for that suspect. Meanwhile, police evacuated the building and reunited students with parents. Just a short time ago, police gave an update on the investigation. We uh, did uh, identified who the who the shooter was through firsthand witnesses, video surveillance. We confirmed it. We then executed a search warrant at the residence of the suspect. And now we're going through the very lengthy process of uh, conducting a thorough investigation to figure out what happened and why. In the meantime, some students are still waiting to be reunited with their parents. Other students are reflecting on their experience. When we think to ourselves what school we go to, we think of Saugus. And Saugus isn't the school this is going to happen to. Like, we just seem so much more safe than a lot of schools. And for it to happen here is just, I can't even comprehend it. It doesn't make sense to me how this could happen here. Right now, it's unclear if the victims are students. Local hospital leaders are expected to host a press conference here in the near future to release more information. This story, of course, is still developing here at the noon hour. To track updates, be sure to check creme.com and the Creme 2 mobile app. You can also find updates tonight on Creme 2 News. Well, closer to home, we do want to get a check on the weather. After a foggy start to the day, we're finally seeing a break in the clouds. Evan Narani tells us what to expect. Thank you very much, Jen. Yeah, we are kicking off now the noon hour with an improvement in many spots. Others still struggling quite a bit. So if you're seeing the sun right now at the noon hour, well, things are looking good for you. If you are down in Walla Walla, you are still seeing four miles of visibility. So uh, some decreased visibility. Kalispell, same situation. OMAC, only six miles of visibility. So we're still seeing some problems. But what we've got overall on watches and warnings shows that that dense fog advisory has expired. That child abduction emergency, which the National Weather Service does issue, is over off toward western Montana. Still an air stagnation advisory on the lower left corner of your screen there where air quality, not only for that region, but really across the board, is in the moderate range thanks to a pretty strong temperature inversion. Now, this afternoon, we are expected to make it to about the mid to upper 40s, 45, maybe 46 degrees. If we're lucky, we'll make it as high as 48. Computer models are being very generous with that, so that would be very nice to see those above normal temperatures. But otherwise, we will cool down steadily overnight. Once those clouds increase, the decrease in temperature will come very slowly, so about degree by degree into the overnight hours. And hopefully, hopefully keep us a little bit warmer than normal overnight. Uh, coming up, we'll talk a little bit about what's to come. And right now it looks like there's plenty of rain on the way for our Friday into the weekend. I'll have more details and we'll take a look at Future Tracker in just a few minutes. Evan, thank you. Well, police say hazing is not linked to the death of a Washington State University student. Authorities say 19 year old Samuel Martinez was found dead Tuesday at the Alpha Tau Omega Fraternity Chapter House. Pullman police say an initial investigation shows alcohol may be a factor in the freshman's death. Martinez's family released a statement saying in part, Sam was a beautiful spark of light, a comet that came and went through our lives too quickly. I hope the effect it does have that the university will like kind of have a stricter rule on Greek life to like make sure that these underage people aren't like getting into these kind of things and putting themselves at risk. Now, the university does host mandatory orientation classes on the dangers of alcohol abuse. But as you heard there, some students say the education is not enough. There is new evidence today in the Kelsey Barrett murder trial in Colorado. 
Her fiance, Patrick Frazee, is accused of her murder. Barrett grew up here in eastern Washington. An expert witness testified a tooth found near a burned area on Frazee's property is human. However, the witness says there is not enough DNA to determine who it belongs to. Frazee pleaded not guilty. If convicted, he faces life in prison. Washington State Transit Association is joining a lawsuit against the state in an effort to stop I-976 from taking from effect. Opponents. The suit claims the initiative violates various aspects of the Washington Constitution. Now, the anti-tax initiative puts a hard cap on car tab fees at $30. Well, it's been more than a week since election night and the race for Spokane City Council president is still too close to call. The two candidates are only separated by about 300 votes and there are still 5600 ballots left to count, only some of which pertain to this race. We explain how this race could impact the political makeup of the council. Currently, there are six left-leaning council members and just one right-leaning member. The mayor is right-leaning. In 2020, the mayor will stay right-leaning. Two left-leaning members, Candace Mum and Kate Burke, are still mid-term and so will still be on the council. Two others, Lori Kinnear and Karen Stratton, are leading their races right now, although Stratton's remains very close. Mike Fagan is poised to be replaced by a fellow right-leaning member, Michael Cathcart. The other two positions will be determined by the outcome of the city council president race. If Beggs wins, he becomes council president and his old seat gets filled by appointment, a process that's up to the rest of the council. Since the rest of the council will have a 5-1 liberal majority, it's likely the seventh member will also be left-leaning. Therefore, if Beggs wins, the political balance will be the same as it is now. If Wendell wins, Begg stays in his current seat. That means the council will still have a 5-2 liberal majority. That's enough for the left-leaning members to pass ordinances without the approval of the right-leaning ones and enough to override a Woodward veto. So the balance would be slightly more conservative, although when it comes down to votes, not in a meaningful way. Nonetheless, the council president is sort of a figurehead and they can hold some serious political sway. Though, any actual decisions ultimately come down to the vote of the full council. That was Casey Decker reporting. Well, still to come on Creme 2 News at noon, how a local female entrepreneur is using healthy eating as a weapon against climate change.